with over 400 celebrity interviews and tons of pop culture nerdiness, Too Opinionated is a safe haven for your inner geek. Find us at MeisterCon.com or on YouTube under MeisterCon Pod. And please subscribe. It would really help us out. Thanks, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Too Opinionated. I'm so excited today. I've got actor fellow baseball fan, Julian Bailey with me. So welcome, Julian. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to have you. I'm a big fan of uh, yours and a big fan of Three Pines. We had uh, Sarah came on a couple of weeks ago. Nice. This was, well, I'll take that back. It was, she came on right before it was released. So I hadn't really? watched it yet. And she came uh, on and kind of talked about it. And I was like, oh, that sounds like something I'd want to watch. So I went watch it. It was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, I love the uh, two episodes a book type of story. Yeah. 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 I like, like a movie too. of the week. Right. Right. Yeah. I like that too. That was pretty cool. It's pretty good. Yeah. Are we going to get a season two? I hope so. I hope so. And we don't have word yet officially, but we're I hope hoping they do. And, uh, so good. You know, yeah, I appreciate that. And, you know, we feel like we left it all out there on the floor to use to borrow a sports term. Um, yes. We we feel like we just put our hearts and souls into this thing and did what we could to deliver something that was going to be worth people's time, you know, watching. And uh, what else can we do? So as far as I know, the early numbers are pretty encouraging. I think we were number yeah. one in about five countries for three weeks seems like that deserves a season yeah. i would say so i would say especially given the way it ended right no spoilers but yeah you yeah, watched yeah. the whole thing right yeah 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 oh yeah yeah you had a little yeah. bit uh left out there we did yeah we did Some no, loose I, ends. I think it wouldn't be right it wouldn't be right not to renew so yeah from yeah. our lips to god's ears man let's do you it. know fans hate it when you have loose ends and then the mm. show ends you can't do that you can't do that. Can't do that. Can't do it. Yeah. Give it me reminded right. me um of watching like those those they used to have they called it a movie of the week, but it was actually a rotating series of shows. Uh -huh. So like one Saturday night there'd be Quincy. You know, uh -huh. the next Saturday night it might be McLeod. You know, the next uh -huh. Saturday night it'd be something else next Saturday. And and it would kind of rotate through every month you'd get like a two hour is kind of like a, a movie of the week. Right. And this had that feel to it. You know, you had the, mm -hmm. you had the quirky detective and then mm -hmm. everybody in the town is kind of quirky. You know, it That's had a, a lot of elements it. from uh, shows that, uh, that I really in enjoyed, you know, it had, I, it reminded me a little of Twin Peaks just from the quirkiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, I think in order to appreciate that one has to have a general, you know, a generally uh, pretty good understanding or knowledge of television history, uh, yes. which it sounds like you do. Um, and maybe people, you know, older than, I don't know, 40, 45 might appreciate that even more, you know, the things yeah. you mentioned. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm glad that you picked up on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is uh, really enjoyable. And there's, if I remember right, there's like 18 books. I think so. I yeah. Think, so think you, so. it's not like you don't have plenty of source material. <laughs> that's right that's right i believe there are 18 or 19 now because i know louise just dropped it she new just book. put one out yeah it may have been so nice. was, was that's my question was that 18 or 19 i'm not entirely sure. sure i've been saying 18 or 19 but i think it it's one or the other uh and very quickly she was number one on the new york times bestseller list so yeah. uh you know we saw that and we thought man this thing's got some heat behind it you know people seem to be responding well the reviews were all together pretty good um you know what's not to like so yeah that's so, exactly yeah, that uh, right my uh my son that does the editing for the podcast he's a librarian that's his his day job and he said they can't keep those books in they go out yeah. as fast as they come back in. that's what i've been hearing that's what i've been hearing yeah, yeah. pretty yeah. good well so so your character was one of our favorites thank you wow he's he's a uh, very mysterious <laughs> you know seems like he has secrets kind of brooding you know, kind of what is it, uh, tortured artist type? Yeah, that about says it. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair enough, man. Yeah, no, he does have secrets. He definitely does have secrets. Uh, 
you know, we learn about some of those secrets in this yeah. first season. Uh, but you can probably tell that there are, there are more layers to this onion. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, you know, he's a complex character, but he's that way for a reason, as we find out in five and six episodes, five and six. Yeah. People don't just, you know, become right. insecure or so sort of emotionally layered and complex for no reason. They're coming from somewhere. And yeah. uh, one's family background and history has a lot to do with with the way uh, one develops uh, in their personality and in, in, and in terms of, you know, their, their insecurities and their vices and so on uh, just has so much to do with that. I was describing him as coming from privilege, but then I kind of caught myself in, in an earlier interview and I, I said, well, let me, let me, let me catch myself there. Cause how, pri how privileged are you if you grow up in a family like, Peter well, Mara right. grew up in, you know, I mean, it's like the external trappings, the materialistic uh, things that he was privileged to have just, yeah. I mean, pale in comparison with the, the, uh, the, um, the disadvantage that he had, uh, I guess, uh, yeah. emotionally. You know? Yeah. We kind of um, took it as, as he was, he's trying to be a good person. He's yeah. just got all his baggage. That's and right. stuff that's kind of weighing him down. So that's kind of that, you know, we're trying to figure out. Well, does that's it, right. Does that's he right. turn out to be a good person or is that's it right. is he going to? Well, I'm glad you caught that. I, no, I, I appreciate yeah. that you caught that because that is that is something as an actor, you go and you look at the material. The first rule that I have is to never judge a character, you know, yeah. like in terms of judging or criticizing a character, you know, he's doing the best that he can uh, to make a good life. And, uh, you know, sometimes you can you can leave the uh, the surroundings that you're that you're in and think you're escaping. But when the demons go with you, they'll pop up and manifest out there in the country where you thought you were out, you know, hiding. <laughs> and uh, evidently that's that's what happens with him, as as I think does with all of us. You know, any any yeah. one of us has things that we haven't resolved or dealt with on the inside. And then we try to run away from them or whatnot. And uh <laughs> Yeah, that and didn't they, work out they, very they have good. A way of popping up, man. They have a way of making yeah. themselves known. So, yeah, hopefully Peter can can figure some things out. But yeah, like you said, you know, he's doing his best. He's Glad trying. you saw that. Yeah, he's out there trying. He's definitely well, trying. And it's, yeah. it you know it takes place in a small town, and I grew up in a small town, and and the the show does a really good job of showing how the the townspeople they tend to stick together. They try to look out for each other where they can. You know, they're not going to just easily give away secrets and stuff. So you have Alfred Molina's character. Is he having to have to really dig to get any of that out? Even the stuff that doesn't seem like it'd be a big deal to tell, he has to kind of find that stuff out. And and that reminded mm -hmm. me of a small town. You know, they tend to mm -hmm. stick together and maybe be a little, you know, uh, leery of, of outsiders coming in. Yeah, and maybe for good reason. You know, yeah. uh, like like I was just saying, people are the way they are for a reason. And sometimes <laughs> having been burned, you know, in the past, people are going to have that extra layer, uh, that extra guard up. Yeah. And um, I, I do understand. Now, I don't know if you've read the books or or how many of them. you've. Well, read. I'm just starting. I'm just starting okay. to because I, I hadn't heard it. That's one. And I'm a reader, but I hadn't heard of yeah. those. No, um, cool, but cool. yeah, after watching it. Yeah, we we got the first book, and my wife read nice. it first, and now I'm nice. I'm working my way. Through oh, very it. good, very good. That's yeah. nice to hear. But I was just going to say though that from my understanding, because I haven't finished all the books now, I'm I'm kind of leaping through some myself. Oh, yeah. I decided not to read them parallel with shooting when we were filming because yeah, I could see where that I messed you up. Yeah, I didn't want to get too much in my head about certain things that weren't necessarily the direction that the producers were taking the show. Uh, for one thing, they made my character and Anna's character, Clara, my wife, my uh, character's yeah. wife in the show, about 10 to 15 years younger in the show than they are portrayed in the books. Um, and a couple other things, too, just certain little little tweaks. Uh, but I was going to say that and my understanding is that in the show, there's a bit more of a portrayal of, of the darkness or the leeriness, as you put it, uh, yeah. as opposed to in the books where there's perhaps a bit more of a, a, a warm picture painted of the town and um yeah, i think that's least, fair yeah I, th I think that's probably fair i mean you know it, it, i don't know it reminds me of 
when I first moved to Chicago, when I started my career, I was in LA at first, and then I moved to Chicago. And I thought at first it was kind of bristly and kind of a bit rough. And I was describing it to people as kind of that way, you know, sort of difficult to break the ice. But once I did out there, it was just, I mean, that that city's kind of etched on my heart now. I, I met the greatest people and there was such a warmth uh, with the people. And um, and uh, yeah, I, th I think that's kind of what Three Pines is like. I think it's, it, yeah. at least in the show. Uh, it, it might be a bit hard to crack at the at the top, but once you get in, you're in, you're really in. At least that's that's the way I would like to think yeah. of it. Yeah, I, I think that's a great way to think about it. Mm -hmm. What um, what got you into acting? You know, when you were growing up, what made you want to go into uh, acting? Well, yeah, I've been asked this question quite a lot, and and it's funny because the more that that I'm asked, the, the more things I start to remember about those earlier <laughs> days and how the ball got rolling in the first place with me into uh, into this career. I was quite young. I was born into a musical family. So my mother was a musician and she put a real strong emphasis on art and culture. So my brother and uh, myself would go to art galleries with my mother frequently uh, and concerts. You know, she would take us to, you know, chamber music or classical concerts. Oh, yeah. She was a, a pianist and she had been a music teacher in England and she met my dad out there. They moved to Canada had my sisters had a big break then had my brother and me uh not in that order uh and uh <laughs> and and they uh you know my mother in particular really wanted us to have a cultural sort of rearing and foundation uh so one of the things that that they would do is take us to these children's theater uh productions so there was a children's theater group in the city which funnily enough William Shatner and Christopher Plummer were students at when they were young uh, which of course was a long time ago. Pretty great. It's pretty old now. <laughs> well, with Christopher Plummer, of course, God rest his soul, has passed on. Yeah. But um, yeah, so we were going to these um, these what they called major productions as a kid, and so that was my introduction to this children's theater group. But then what happened was, I was going to uh, school. We had I changed schools between the the third and the fourth grade. So I started the fourth grade at a new school, and there was a kid at my new school who was on a Canadian TV show. And I, I remember being a little starstruck because he was on this, I believe it was for YTV, which was a Canadian network, which back in the day, I know Alanis Morissette was on a show on YTV. And nice. I think, you know, I know, I know for a fact, Ryan Gosling was, and maybe Ryan Reynolds, but anyway, this kid was on a, was on one of these shows and I believe it was for YTV. But anyway, I, I remember thinking, well, that's so cool. This kid's getting paid to do this. I'm all of 10 or 11 years old at the time, you know? And, uh, and I thought to myself, man, I can really do this. So I, I asked my, my, my parents if I could join the children's theater group, and they obliged, uh, and I uh, joined the group, and um, and then I did one of those major productions, and I was cast as Doc in Snow White, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, and I just <laughs> loved it. I was like the head dwarf, you know, and uh, I loved it. It was so cool. Uh, but right around that time, a casting crew were, uh, was going around the city trying to find two boys to cast in a uh, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation film that they were yeah. doing for Christmas. And so I ended up being one of the boys who was cast uh, and uh, shot that movie. Uh, oh, and then the other thing was is that the children's theater group, where, where I was learning, by the way, Shakespeare, Moliere, Chekhov, you know, nice. real classics – yeah, and they referred me and some other some other kids to a dubbing studio in town who were turning a Japanese anime cartoon into English, dubbing the cartoon into English. So I went to audition for that. I got a part in that, and uh, and then that led to other dubbing opportunities. Uh, and then I did a then I did that movie. Then I did a play with the National Theatre School of Canada. So all these things kind of just once that first domino fell. These other things kind of went pop, pop, pop. And yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. And, and so I was like, well, this is pretty cool. I'm missing lots of school and, you know, didn't have a problem with that. Um, <laughs> of course, I, I, you know, I loved basketball and baseball too. But um, being from, you know, growing up in Montreal, I could only play baseball really like half the year. Uh, so basketball was kind of the sport I, I was getting better at. Yeah. And I had a bad knee injury. So, I was like, well, I'm not going to be a pro athlete, so I guess I'm just going to focus more on on this acting career, which seems to be going pretty well so far. So that's how it all started in my childhood. 
uh, later, I when I after I turned eighteen, I moved to Pasadena, California, and I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, and then yeah. I after that I went to Chicago and started doing theater out there. So that was that's kind of the 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 long story short, believe it or not. But yeah, that's that's sort of how it all the ball got rolling in that respect. You know, I didn't realize it at the at the time, but back in the nineties. I uh, had a couple of comic book stores. That's that's how I put myself through college. I, I had a couple of comic oh, book nice. stores. And there was a uh it, it was kind of like it was kind of like an anime version of the jungle book. Huh. And we showed that at the at one of the stores, kind of like uh kids day, kind of mm-hmm. showed that. But you did the voice for that. Yeah, I did I did now help me understand so you're saying you you had the comic book store at the comic book store and we had like um <laughs> well it is it it, it's been too long but we either had a vhs tape uh-huh. okay of the jungle book or yeah. we also we traded comic books to get a prime star system so prime star was like the satellite system before direct tv yeah uh, sure bottom yeah. out so one at one of those ways we we watched. So you the, said, uh, this anime and the reason we watched it yeah. is because it looked kind of the the um, the cartoon the animation looked kind of animated like so I'm like okay no totally that. that totally was yeah check uh, that out and I cool didn't know that? it but you did the. <laughs> You did the voice. I yeah, I did. I was Mowgli. I was the voice of Mowgli. You know, and little did I know at the time that this was going to become this worldwide thing. I mean, yeah, of course, Jungle Book was popular, and I, I was familiar with the Jungle Book, uh, certainly the Disney version as yes. a kid. But I, I didn't know when I auditioned for this thing that it was going to become this this huge thing. I mean, to you know, yeah. I, I, thank you for sharing that with me. To put it in perspective, um, in, in another way. I was uh, approached by a journalist in India a couple of years ago, and she she asked if she could do an article uh, on me about the Jungle Book and about my role in the Jungle Book. I'm like, I'm like, you do know I, I was it was a dubbed project, right? I, I didn't do the I didn't do the animation. I I wasn't acting in it live. I was the voice of Mowgli. Like That's I was. Right. She's like, yeah, yeah, you were the voice of Mowgli. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so so yeah, it was pretty cool, man. And I mean, no, I mean, I guess it's nothing to scoff at. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, you know, I thought it was interesting it, because what are the odds that we're, you know, kind of, kind of showing that at the, uh, at the comic store? And that, that's a good point. What are the odds? Thirty years Probably later, now odds. we're talking. Thirty years later, here we are. You know, talking over like, you know, I've been trying to set this interview up for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, thirty years in the making, but no, but you know that show though. If anybody out there wants to watch. It's really well done, and I'm not saying that because I'm in it. No, it I was, was. A, it was really a little well kid. The the artwork is and the music is so nice. It's really yeah. really good, and and you know not, not to pat myself on the back, but just the general uh, production quality from the the dub version, at least you know into English was was pretty good. I think. I mean, um, yeah, it was. I mean, the talent was 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 great. Not talking about myself again, but I'm just saying like <laughs> the overall cast was was tremendous I, I i watch it now with my with my daughter and she loves it you know and she's nine so um yeah that's funny that you should bring that up but you know it was cool yeah yeah we we had a blast uh watching we did that a lot at the uh, comic store we run we ran cartoons all the time oh that's cool cartoons that are was awesome the, that was the thing so it's either cartoons anime that type stuff or maybe uh you know star trek that was kind of big. Star Trek. So, can't go wrong with Star Trek. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so we did a lot of a lot of that. And you did yeah, cool. you did some voices for the Madeline movies too. Yeah, right? also was yeah, I, staying in the early days. Yeah, I, I was Pepito in Madeline, the original one. Pepito. Uh also uh with uh with Christopher Plummer, who I mentioned earlier, he he narrated them and yeah, they included singing and it was a mini series for HBO. And this is this was yeah. a while ago. I was telling someone the other day, I was pretty green uh when i left uh montreal and moved to california i was you know just barely 18 years old and i got yes. a call from somebody involved with sony wonder uh they wanted to sony wonder was like the child's branch of of sony i guess for their music division and uh they wanted to buy me out uh to put this album out with the songs from the series and they basically were like look if you don't 
accept if you don't accept the buyout you just won't be on the album so there's no negotiating basically that's gonna happen just so you know. <laughs> and i'm 18 years old in my apartment in pasadena going uh, okay how much money are you gonna give me and they're like oh it wasn't very much you know pro- i don't know probably less than two thousand dollars or something uh and then a couple of years later there i am in uh in chicago and the <laughs> madeline thing blew up it oh, was yeah. everywhere you couldn't go anywhere without seeing Madeline. And I'm going, oh, I was in the Barnes and Noble Borders bookstore, all these, you know, places and just Madeline. Asked for 2,500. <laughs> yeah, man. I didn't get it. I didn't see a penny of that. I don't think um, no, no royalties on that puppy, but, um, but that's okay. People loved it and they got into it. And, uh, but still to this day, people find out I was Pepito and they're like, Pepito. Pepito. And I'm like, yes. yep. You know, I turn around, people said Pepito. I turn around. I'm like, Hey, you, you talking to me? Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool, man. You did your research for sure. <laughs> well, that's one. Uh, my oldest was born in 94. So okay. so she watched some of those growing up. You know, some of yeah. it would have been after they'd been out for a little while. But yeah, she would. So I've seen some of those. It's just been, you know, it's been 30 years. But I remember, yes. you know, watching. And they were pretty wow. well. They were. They were well done. Yeah, they were. And those were originals. So the, the Jungle Book was was dubbed from the Japanese original, yes. but ours were original in, in which case they did the voices and then they did the cartoons as I understood it. Yes. Uh, so we, we, we put the voices down in a studio and then they, uh, then they drew the cartoons and, you know, it was all original music and it was awesome. It was really, yeah, really cool. Really I mean, cool. I think they live on people still enjoy those. Oh, uh, they're out there. Specials. Yeah. yeah. They're kind of timeless, really. I mean, the story itself was just t- a timeless children's well that's it and the anime was good enough that it holds up right the animation yeah yeah the animation uh, was good enough it it holds up uh oh totally you know if you want to watch it yeah it's well done yeah it's well done those are those are good stories of course she's still you know madeline's still popular she is and they did they did a few more uh iterations of of the story uh i can't remember uh, all who was involved. In fact, actually, I do know one actor who was involved, I think, and don't quote me on this, <laughs> but I think David Morse played Pepito in one of the later iterations oh, really? of the Madeline show. And you probably know David Morse, the actor. Yeah, of course. And I, and when I saw that, I was like, is that the David Morse? Like <laughs> the David Morse, the, who's an amazing actor? Uh, and I, I think it is. But, but he's following you. Yeah, he's following. That's pretty, I mean, if, that's pretty good. If you got to have somebody follow you, that's a pretty good person to follow. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, kind of funny. Eh? I mean, I guess when you have a career that started quite young, I'm not that old, but I was pretty young when I did those. So yeah. it, it does make me feel kind of old. But I have to remind myself I'm not that old, which I'm, <laughs> which I'm really not that old. But you just uh, had an early start. I had a pretty early start. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then the, I really got, you know, the baptism by fire when I moved to the States and started my career, having had early success, I was just expecting everything to be pretty much smooth sailing, which it definitely was not. Is it, yeah. It doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't work that way. Are you all, still, like, are you still doing any voice work? Yes, I am. I am. And yeah. I love doing it. I love doing it lately. Actually, in the last couple of years, I've been doing more, um, well, dubbing again, which has oh, yeah. been such a, such a blessing. Uh, for Netflix, um, they've had a couple series that they've needed to translate into English, and uh, I've been fortunate enough to have been involved with some of those. A couple of them have been where I had big roles. Was one was called Vincenzo, and yeah. it's a N- Netflix show, a Korean show, and I played the I was the voice of Vincenzo, the American or the English voice of Vincenzo. Yeah, and the and the other one uh, that just came out last year, I believe, and was top ten for a little while was called uh, Narco Saints. And I was oh, one of the lead. I didn't realize that one. In that, and, you know, my voice. Yeah, yeah, Narco Saints. That was pretty cool as well. Uh, so I love doing the dubbing. And I do video games too. I'm the voice. I'm, I say I'm the voice. Well, I'm, I'm like the anchor voice that talks to the player of this game called Rainbow Six Siege, which is a- Oh, uh, I meant to ask you about that. Popular, um, yeah, video game. Yeah, we had, um, and I, the name's escaping me now because it's been a year or two ago, but, mm-hmm. but we had one of the, the, the actors for the other voices on uh i wonder who that might have been jeff maybe jeff terramanen or uh patricia somerset or um it was it was a guy but i don't think it was jeff so i I have to look okay oh it could have have been um martin copping maybe that's who it was oh he's awesome yeah martin was yeah he's terrific yeah now now i remember 
he uh he did the interview he was in his car on a yes. beach in australia yes. doing he's, the cool. Interview. he's a cool guy man yeah I, yeah he's a cool guy I, I don't know him very well but we have had the chance to connect uh once or twice uh because i was involved in some thing for rainbow six that he sort of wrangled and put together a few years ago have you and, played uh, the game oh yes i have yes i have and i <laughs> love the game i really like the game i was nervous about getting involved at the beginning because i thought i'm just going to get totally razzed online for being not being good at the game you know <laughs> uh, i got invited I, at the time it probably would have been 2016 or 17 but i was invited to be part of some sort of a group of actors who were involved with the game uh playing online were you playing and, like on twitch or something yeah exactly and i was in la at the time and uh patricia somerset who plays uh, I believe she's uh, Ash, I think, in the game. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure she's Ash in the game. And um, she reached out to me and said they're, they're organizing this thing. And I I think I had a scheduling conflict or something. And I was like, what? Well, you know, because I, I just thought I'm going to get I'm going to get raked over the coals for not being any good at the game. She was like, <laughs> ah, it's, it's not about that, you know, but I was out of town. I was in L.A. at the time. And I remember and uh, I think I had some kind of a scheduling conflict, but um they probably did something uh, for it, but eventually I I did one of those things and it was it was a lot of fun. I got some lucky some lucky kills. It was a lot of fun. Uh, that was the one that Martin set up. But um, no, it's it's a great game. I don't know if you've played it or not, but it's a lot of fun. As I've watched as, my son play. Yeah, for, I refuse for to play video games because I know I'll get hooked, and then there goes my podcasting time. Th there you go. <laughs> there you go. And and that was one of my apprehensions to getting involved in the first place um yeah. because i just thought i'm gonna get too sucked into this and i don't want to waste time but I, but funnily enough i'll say this i actually found that it it i learned to manage my time better when i was able to get oh, that good. get that uh out of my system it was it was sort of oddly satisfying you know playing the game and i would forget that like i'm constantly hearing my voice telling me what to do you know in the game i was i was so immersed in the in the game but playing online is weird though sometimes because you know of course people if you're talking to other players they they eventually well, they can hear that you know you, you kind of sound like hq <laughs> that's kind of weird <laughs> but uh i've done that a few times to, to, you know, has anybody ever told you that you kind of sound like that? yeah yeah no it's it's kind of funny man you can definitely uh way to prank people but um but yeah and i've thought of starting a twitch just for fun and seeing you should you know, yeah i've thought about it i've thought about it and you know, I really should. I, I probably because I have, I have love a, that stuff. They don't care if you can play or not. They just enjoy watching you try. I, maybe I should try it. Maybe I should try it. I have this set up now because I've I've been doing you know more interviews and things and and uh, it would be fun to see where that could go. But um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You should do that. Rainbow Six was a pretty good book. I've read the book. Yeah, yeah. that was. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I it came out it. in the nineties. It, it was uh, it was pretty good. Tom Clancy. It was one of those that, Tom Clancy. Yeah, Tom, Tom Clancy, all his books are pretty good. But I I'm, I remember getting that book as a birthday present, and I hadn't read any Tom Clancy. I, I read that one, really liked it, and then I went back yeah. and, and read some. Well, and now there are supposedly a, a movie's uh, about to drop, I believe, with Michael B. Jordan, uh, as I as I understand it. Don't quote me on that, but that's what I think I heard. Michael I think B. Jordan I heard, didn't he movie. play? Didn't he do a Tom Clancy uh, movie? I uh, he, if it's he did the same character that he did playing. something. He did something, but no, he he's great, and I'm sure he's gonna knock it out of the park. Um, it's yeah, yeah. it's uh, yeah. supposed to come out within the next year or two, I would guess. But you never know with these releases. But uh, but yeah, yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty cool. good. So cool my franchise. Yeah, my mother is the resident uh, soap opera ex. For she said okay. you had a little stint on Young and the Rest. I did. Yeah, a little stint. Yeah, yeah. She. We I always play that game where if when I'm having a guest, I go around to the family. I'm like, where have you seen this person before? <laughs> she, it's it's either nothing or a soap opera. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, the young and the restless. Yeah, I had a little stint on that. That was really cool and surreal all at once. Um, yeah. It actually nearly turned into something much bigger. I had a relatively short arc um, on the show back in, well, would have been a while ago now. Uh, I believe it would have been towards the end of 2006, so it's quite a while ago. But I had a yes. short stint on that show, and it nearly became something else. Uh, but that's a kind of a long story that didn't end up happening. They nearly turned my character, or they were considering turning my character into uh, 
into someone a lot more significant than he turned out to be oh, in the yeah. show. But for all intents and purposes, I was really just the flirty bartender. who <laughs> got to flirt with every gorgeous woman on the show, including the elderly ladies uh, with cheesy pickup lines and everything. And uh, that's probably kind of fun. Yeah, there was there was ruminations and it's talks of uh, I say talks. I don't know why I do that. My, my hand puppet days coming back. <laughs> But uh, of turning my character into, um, well, revealing that he was actually the heir of the uh, makeup fortune, which I guess the the premise of the show has to do with this this makeup fortune, uh, and or cosmetics for um, the empire. So he's say. he he's the bartender, but he's got a secret. Yeah, family we find, we, right. We we were gonna find out that he's actually the illegitimate, you know, son who mm-hmm. actually is the bloodline heir of the the whole thing but they ended up going in a different direction and and uh yeah that was that was uh, an interesting little uh period of time because we were shooting across the hall from the price is right which is a show that i grew oh, up yes. on so i was seeing bob barker in the cafeteria and that's and awesome the big, the big showtime showdown wheel and hearing them you know taping shows it was it was really that's cool, cool. Man. It, it was cool and at the time too i was in a rough living situation i was like half homeless I, uh, my agents were talking about dropping me right before I booked that thing. Oh my gosh. And I was actually, when I was shooting that show, I was actually living in Santa Barbara, which is about two hours drive North of Los Angeles. Uh, and had to, when I was coming in for tapings, I had to come down, uh, you know, a pretty, pretty solid drive to get, to get down to LA yeah. to the Fairfax district where CBS was, which ironically five years earlier, I lived up the street in the Fairfax district. <laughs> And there I was, hit some hard times and, uh, you know, had been living out of my car. And then a buddy of mine had a house he was he was demolishing that he had bought in Santa Barbara and said, why don't you stay up there at the house and help me demo the house? <laughs> so I'm like in the at night, I'm I'm sleeping with a roof over my head. And uh, in the daytime, I'm, I'm taking a big old sledgehammer to that same roof <laughs> to help my buddy get this this thing down to where he could do. His I mean, renovation. don't you don't you think most actors have some type of story similar to that it's like it's a rite of passage before you get into a little more secure situation i i think a lot do i think a lot do and i think a lot end up falling off because they're like i'm good you know i'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and sell life insurance or which I, which i have all the respect for in the world if you want to you know sell insurance or do whatever you know work is work and uh yeah, I, I don't necessarily wear it as a badge of honor that I that I struggled in some of the ways that I did. I was a Canadian living in the United States on a limited work permit. So, yeah. you know, I wasn't really supposed to go get a job at Blockbuster Video or uh, the Ritz-Carlton. I, I, I was offered a job at the Ritz-Carlton right before, or in fact, right around the time I booked The Young and the Restless to be a, a, a bellboy, but it was a graveyard shift. And the whole thing with working with using my social insurance number for jobs that weren't acting jobs was kind of a gray area. And I didn't want to, I didn't yeah, want to mess that illegal. up. I, yeah. No, I didn't want to take any risks in that respect. So I had to turn that gig down, but thankfully got the young and the restless job. And then, um, yeah, it, it, I don't know, write a passage. Maybe it is for some people. I have a friend uh, who's an Indian uh, filmmaker, lovely, yes. lovely guy who I met in Chicago, who I did a film with. His name is Kevin Mukherjee. And he he used to always tell me, you know, when I would tell him what I was going through, he'd say, well, it's part of your journey. It's part of <laughs> and I, So I always remember that when I'm going through, you know, a narrow passage or, you know, something that just seems like a head scratcher, you know, why, why do I have to deal with this? You know, uh, it's humbling. But then I get his words coming through my head going, it's part of your journey. And uh, it's good to have people have known and, you know, been around That's people right. like that who are who help ground you and, and remind you that, you know, it is a noble profession, you know, to be an artist and yeah. uh, and to tell stories. It's something that we really need. And um, I feel very fortunate to to still have the opportunity yeah. to do that and hope that I, I continue to. But I don't take anything for granted. You know, I'm. I'm super grateful for every opportunity I've been afforded and continue to be afforded. Well, and you've had some, just, just some terrific roles. Like we loved your, your, uh, uh role on NCIS. Thank you. That was, yeah. uh, it, um, that was one that we, we were kind of casual watchers of NCIS. If it was on, yeah. we watch it cause it was a good show, but yeah. it wasn't a weekly watch, but then we right. saw your episode and we we're like, that was, that was some really 
good acting. Thank like you. Like when you showed up on Three Pines, I was like, well, we already know that. Thank you. Oh, that's nice, man. I appreciate that. That's really nice to hear. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now, a lot of people have seen that because the show became such a big hit. And, oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, yeah, I, I, I uh, that means a lot to hear you say that, you know, that show when I was involved relatively briefly, but it was the first season and we didn't know what it was going to be we knew it was belisario which you know his track record right. more or less spoke for itself That's right and um we didn't know it, you know it was going to be this huge thing mark harman knocked on my trailer door my first day and uh, i opened my door there's mark harman and he says hey man he goes i'm mark he goes uh do you want to talk about the episode today or you want to talk about the scenes we're shooting today and i was like sure i'm not thinking where are we going to do that he goes come in my trailer so he invites me into his trailer and we sat down and, and talked for a while and he told me so so many you know nuggets uh, that I've I've kept with me about his his early days and choices yes. that he had to make to to ensure that he wasn't just seen as this you know pretty boy and uh, of course I I was I didn't have that problem when I was there. I don't think I I was ever really seen as pretty boy or whatever but I was kind of like in the middle part leading man part character <laughs> actor which made me difficult to cast at times I think but but he told me some really valuable things and which I've which I've held close to me throughout the years. And uh, I've always heard that he is just a, just a genuinely nice person. He really is. And he's a real pro. He's a real yes. pro. And I, I just can't, I, I can't overstate how much I appreciate people who, who are so dedicated to, uh, to doing their job well and to treating people well in the process. Right. And, uh, there was some, I don't know if you remember, but there were some weird things fl flying around about Mark being kind of a bit of a tough guy or something a couple of years ago. And, I remember that, yeah. And, and and I mean, I can say from personal experience, that was not at all my experience. He is just dedicated. He's 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 all about excellence and uh, production value and quality and yeah. uh, treated everybody with absolute dignity and respect. Uh, as long as as far as I could see and um and I, I've heard nothing but the same kind of thing uh since then other than this, this ridiculous little rumor. Yeah, it didn't really around. fit the narrative that's been no. out there, I think. No. Yeah. No, he's yeah. he's awesome. He's one of the best. He's one of the best T V stars I, I think in history. I think he's he he ranks up there with great T V leading men. Yeah. Uh Mark Harmon yeah, I agree is, with that. Uh, is a is a legend in his own right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I know we I know we gotta wrap up pretty soon, but I wanted to throw a few a few more at you because we've seen you in a few things you were on this show that we really liked and it didn't make it uh which we were disappointed in but it was called better off ted yeah i did a brief thing on that yeah yeah, yeah. you played a uh how was the name yeah. i could i didn't i had to look that up i couldn't remember yeah but i remembered you on the show yeah um, but we love that show and it just couldn't i guess it just didn't find that audience um uh, quick enough you know sometimes they I'm trying Good to remember now. To yeah, early. now maybe you know, but did 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 they get? Because I I wasn't a regular on that show. I I yeah. I, uh, I I believe I was in the first season. I I was under the impression for some reason that they had two seasons, but maybe I, I think they had that. two. Was that I think two? They okay. had two. I, maybe yeah. the second one was a little uh, was a little shorter. But yeah, I'm pretty sure maybe. that. Two, yeah, two yeah, that was cool, man. That was actually my first time filming. Uh, down at LA Center Studios, yeah. uh, which was in downtown Los Angeles, and um, and it was just up the street from where a couple years earlier I was actually living in the Mayfair Hotel on uh, Oh nice, leave on Sixth or Seventh Street. Yeah, I nice. lived in the May Mayfair Hotel for a little bit, which is kind of a legendary little spot, um, yes. and not that far from the uh, what what's the uh, the the uh, the famous hotel they made the Netflix show about uh, the Cecil the Cecil Hotel was that the oh one? the Cecil. Uh, not far from there either. Yeah, I don't know how familiar you are with Los Angeles, but but yeah, it's up the street from there. And they ended up uh, shooting uh, Mad Men there as well. Um, but anyway, that's just for whatever reason, kind of irrelevant to your question, I guess. But that's what I remember about uh, about shooting Better Off Ted was that it was my first time shooting downtown L.A. at, at that studio, L.A. Center Studios. Um, so the other one I wanted to bring up was Helix. Mm hmm. You played a lieutenant on there, and that was another one that it was a sci-fi show. It 
for some reason, I was watching it late at night is where I found that one. But okay. <laughs> there, I, I usually, any type of sci-fi show, there was a period there where I'd watch all of them because I was big into the sci-fi stuff. But that one I actually mm-hmm. liked. I just happened to catch it. I was up one night and happened to catch it and then went back in the, and watched them. Yeah, I was kind of late to the game, but I uh, mm-hmm. really enjoyed your character on there. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's pretty good. And didn't you do a Supernatural too? I did actually. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I was up in Vancouver for about a year and a half between 2012 and 2013, and uh, yeah. ended up getting cast on that show, which was quite an experience. Uh, that show was bigger than I realized. I mean, the mm-hmm. <laughs> I, all of a sudden, you know, um, 15 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, exactly. And I, I was going, when I got the audition, I said, it, cause I wasn't really, a, I, I'm not going to say I wasn't a fan of the show, but I wasn't super. Well, I, I guess I wasn't a super fan of the show. Yes. I appreciated yeah. the show for what it was, but, uh, I didn't know it was still in the air when I got the audition and I, my agents told me that I had this audition for super. I said, that show is still in the air. <laughs> they said, yeah. And of course it lasted for a while longer after that. So, yes. uh, that was pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, it's funny because I was up for a different role on that show. Uh, that was a, a bigger part than in a previous episode of that season. And I was in the mix for this bigger role. And, uh, I got a note from casting through, you know, through my agent uh where she said she, she's like julian julian's a good actor but just tell him he's not auditioning for a martin scorsese movie like he, <laughs> he's he's way over layering this this, <laughs> this is supernatural it's for the cw like he can afford to simplify it a bit which is always usually well i'm gonna say always usually that doesn't make a lot of sense but which is usually a good note, you know, to, yeah. to simplify it or to kind of throw it away a bit, especially when you tend to be a bit, um, well, when you like to go deep, you know, as an actor, you like to yeah. kind of get in there. Um, I, I was always disappointed when I would get a, a role on a, on a show and that I was doing, say a guest spot on and I'd come on and I'd have done all my deep preparation and my layering and my character backstory, and all this stuff. And, and we do like, you know, one take and I would think, okay, just getting warmed up and they'd be like, okay, turn it around. And I'm going, what? That's it. We're not going to get it. I'm just getting started. I'm just getting warmed up over here, you know, Uh, but that's kind of television. You know, they really focus on the stars and they're really more, I'm not going to say worried, but they're more concentrated on the way it looks and just staying true to the narrative of the show, which at that point is well established when you're just walking on to a show to do a a week or two's worth of work. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't believe that I'm a comic book guy and I didn't bring up that you you were in X-Men. At the you're uh, you're on the uh, Dark Phoenix movie, I think. Yeah, yeah, I worked on that for a couple of weeks. That was uh, that was a trip. Uh, I was uh, you know, I was glad to have. Well, I was gonna say I was I was glad to have been given the opportunity to uh, to be a part of that film. Of course, I would have liked to have done more in the movie. Yeah, yeah. But just to be a part of it and to be on that set was kind of cool. Was it was pretty cool, you know, hanging out with uh, some pretty big stars. You know, was yeah, was pretty neat. Um. I, my trailer was more or less next to Jennifer Lawrence's trailer. She had this little dog that was always running around and I was always trying to be careful that I didn't step on her dog. Cause I'm lumbering around in this big astronaut outfit for two weeks. And uh, she had this little teacup, something or rather, I want to say like Yorkshire terrier maybe, but it was a super cute dog. And uh, yeah. And, and I remember it was actually her birthday when we were shooting uh, at one point which was also the anniversary of the day I moved to Los Angeles, which is a kind oh, of a weird connection. Yeah, I, that's a weird coincidence. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm just kind of a dates guy. Yeah, I'm like, oh, wow, Jennifer Lawrence turned five when I moved to L.A. Okay, and here we are. <laughs> and she's making $6 million on t- two weeks, basically, worth of work, and I'm making yeah. about twelve grand. But, hey, I'm in a movie. You know, I'm working with, uh, with uh, Michael Fassbender and uh, James McAvoy and Jennifer Lawrence. And, yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean uh, – there was some controversy over that film, if you recall, because there was uh, the, the whole Disney merger thing. Yeah. Uh, and, and so there, there was a lot of, there were a lot of moving parts at the time. And um, I, uh, of course I, I was, you know, I didn't get all up involved in all that, but I couldn't wait for it to come out. Cause I was interested to see it. And then I ended up getting to go to the premiere. Cause I was in LA when awesome. it came out, 
but uh, they had sent me the invitation to the Canadian premiere, but I was in Los Angeles and I went down there. I'd got a nice suit at, at Bloomingdale's. I parked my car next to Rihanna's house in Hollywood because that was where I would park my car. I don't think she lives there anymore, by the way. So don't ask me where that is. That's my parking space. But uh, but I, I walked down in my suit. I had my shades on and I they, they had the whole thing barricaded. I did not have the invitation and I couldn't get through to the publicist. I said, that's it. I'm going to go anyway. I walk up to an LAPD officer standing in front of the barricade at one point there on Hollywood Boulevard, right right near the uh, the man's Chinese theater. Uh, now it's called the TLC theater, uh, or it was at the time anyway. And I said, excuse me, sir. I said, I'm with the premiere. And he just stepped aside and opened the gate and I walked right through. And uh, Oh, you're giving the secret away now. Come, come, I need to yeah, give well, me a good suit. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's what happened. And then I get in there and I realized that I had managed to get in uh, without having to go through any metal detectors or anything. And then they're like, okay, uh, who are you? And I wasn't on the list. I said, I'm the shuttle commander. I'm the guy who's commanding the shuttle. You know, it was like a Seinfeld episode. I'm like, I'm the shuttle commander. What's going on over here? Let me in. And so I'm in the movie. And, uh, <laughs> And so finally, I mean, finally, they they emailed so and so at Fox, so and so emailed so and so. Yes, he's in the movie. We checked IMDb. He's in the movie. And I finally got in, but I missed the gaggle. I missed to get my picture in, in all the you know all the the big thing. You know, did you go to Canada to go to that one? Did I did I go to say? Because you had an invitation to the Canadian premiere. Did you did you go to that one? No, because I was in L.A. So I was like, <laughs> I'm in L.A. Yeah, no, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I, and I did. I managed to get in and I got in and, you know, and and I was awesome. cool. You know, I, I was there. I got in. And afterwards, the the PR, the head PR coordinator was like all apologetic. She's like, I'm so sorry. We didn't realize who you who you were. <laughs> I was like, man, I, hey, I'm the shuttle commander. You should have known who I was. Yeah, but it's yeah, okay. Right. No sweat. Forget about it. You know? Yeah, I was. it really was a Seinfeld episode. But uh, no, it was cool, though, man. Um no, that was a fun, a fun time. I was hanging out with the Jonas Brothers, and it, it was, uh, it was, that's, uh, that's it was, cool. Yeah, it was, it was, it was fun. We, um, uh, my, my wife works for Live Nation, so she's out in L. Right. She's out in L.A. right now. She's out wow, there cool about once that? a month. So, so I'll sneak out there with her several times a year, and we normally stay, um, at the Roosevelt there across the street there from. That's Dallas. crazy. That's yeah. crazy. That's where our after party was, and that's where. My uh, graduation from the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, we had our graduation party at the Roosevelt Hotel all the way, nice. all the way That's back in 1997. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a different deal back then. Hollywood was not what it became. They really kind of yeah. spruced it up and they spruced up that hotel in particular, which which is kind of a legendary uh, hotel. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so, I wanted cool. to give you this uh, little little this is. A, a little tidbit because you brought up that merger with uh, Disney. Yeah. 1996, Marvel went bankrupt. And that's why I closed my comic book stores. I was like, oh, that's over. Huh. They're, <laughs> they're out. Well, then they wow. sold off all the rights to those characters, but they sold them to different companies. And then w once they kind of got their act together, you know, that's why you've got the Marvel universe and you had Sony doing so you had all the wow. boxes that you had all these different and, and now they're trying to get them all back under one roof, but that's why we don't have X-Men in the Marvel universe yet. That is very interesting. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So now they're trying yeah. to get them all, you know, their properties pulled back under one roof and they're getting close. I mean, they got pretty much all of them back except X-Men, but I think they're close to that. Yeah, yeah, I think that consolidation, for lack of a better word, uh, will prove to be a good thing for um, for the yeah, franchise. I, yeah, I think it will. I yeah. think it. I think it will too. Although I'm sure they were involved. I'm sure Marvel mm -hmm. was involved in to have been, the right? making of yeah. those X Men movies. Yeah, but they. I, I would. I don't know, but I. I would imagine they had to have been. Yeah, because yeah. they were pretty well done. You know those. Uh, I thought they did a pretty. I grew up reading the comic books. I thought they did a pretty good adaption you know from that you're not going to get an exact story yeah you would know better than i would yeah i wasn't yeah, i wasn't reading all those comic books i will say the one comic book i, re I remember buying was what the what, superman dying one that was black oh, yeah, with, yeah. in the black it, yeah did you get it in the bag with the yeah i got it in the, the black, bag yeah. and i don't know where it is <laughs> i don't know where it is 
<laughs> but I bought it. I bought it. And I, when uh, my parents sold their house, I was going through every box with you know, <laughs> baseball cards and old, you know, trophies and things. And I yeah. could not find it. Who knows? It's probably kicking around somewhere still, but I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's gone. But, yeah, no, I bought it. I remember going up and buying that because I thought this can be worth some money someday. What I should have done is I should have bought a hundred dollars worth of bitcoin in 2011 there you go <laughs> but yeah anyway, i know no I know. but yeah if we yeah. only know <laughs> somebody knew we didn't know yeah yeah a few people knew but uh but hey man still early days right um <laughs> i mean man, there's still space. time <laughs> well i mean you know yeah it's a it's a bear market rally right now if anyone's a crypto fan out there but uh but I think I think we're gonna we're gonna see lower lows eventually. But this is not oh, yes. a crypto show, is it? So <laughs> but, that's a whole yeah, different it's, podcast. So excuse me, that's a whole other ball game. Yeah, <laughs> bring it back. Well, to Julian, thank you so much. This has been awesome. Yeah, I absolutely. I was looking forward to this one. This uh this has been terrific. I, I'm so happy that you came on the show. No, I appreciate it. It's been a blast, and uh, you know I really. Uh, I wish you all the best with your show and uh, thank you so much for all your support and for following yes. and, uh, and being a, being a fan of, 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 you know, the work and, uh, and our industry, you know, it means a lot, you know, you guys, no, you I guys appreciate do a lot that. for us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. A couple of little things before we wrap mm -hmm. up. Um, are you working on anything else that we can keep an eye out for? Well, uh, I am about to start working on, Funnily enough, now I think I, I think I'm allowed to say this. I didn't sign an NDA for this thing. I don't think. No, I definitely didn't. Don't get in trouble. Um, <laughs> no, I actually, you know, this is kind of a new thing for me. But I'm going to be working for a, a little bit on a uh, on a French show, playing okay. a uh, playing a uh, a guy who who is an English man, an English speaking yeah. man, who joined this french army uh division kind of like the navy seals or something like that called yeah. the the legionnaire the legionnaires oh That's legionnaires yeah and uh it's a it's a it's a little recurring thing at the moment uh but so anyway my french isn't the greatest but but they wanted someone that had an accent when speaking french and spoke with a bit of a french accent which even though i'm from here when i speak french it's a bit more with a, a french accent because that's the way i i learned in school yeah well uh, i was like gonna french say you you've french. probably got a little experience with the french accent yeah yeah so and you know when you get a script you can learn the words and uh and that's it's, awesome it's where's uh easier. where's it going to be uh, showing well it, it's it's a it's a quebec show so since i'm up here you know i did something on another quebec show back in august which uh, comes out pretty soon i think and yes. um you know my character speaking french but of course again he's an anglophone he's an english speaking person so that's a new sort of foray for yeah, me that's and that's awesome I, i'll be starting that in um march i think um shooting in, i think march and april but um so that's coming up and then other than that i'm tinkering around with a couple of scripts of my own and hoping to maybe pitch Very something good. so you write a little bit yeah i do i do that's we awesome. had a script um my writing partner and I had a script with a, with a pretty, pretty big director who was sort of mentoring us on it. And then that dude ended up kind of going a different direction. It was right when the pandemic was starting, which yeah. was totally understandable, but he kind of got us to the point that we got to where we're at with it now. It's sort of sitting there. Uh, we'll see what might happen with that. But um, other than that, I have a couple other ideas and I'm playing around that, with it. Yeah, and, that's uh, exciting. What's the genre yeah. for that one? Well, that one that I, that I mentioned was a uh, well i would say it's action thriller suspense it's it's along those lines oh, okay all right yeah sounds sounds like yeah. something we would watch yeah 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 it's uh it's 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 interesting if anything you know ends up happening with it i'll I'll try to let you know maybe uh yeah yeah you, you gotta come back if if come back and promote your it. own projects yeah, gets yeah, out yeah. There. you gotta come back and talk about that that's exciting. yeah it'd be fun That'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, so last thing before we wrap up, um, where can we find you on social media? Social media, pretty straightforward. I am on Instagram. Um, I'm not it's super active on there. I yeah, think it is. Yeah, I think it is. I, I should be more active on there than I am, but that's where I am. I am Julian Bailey. I-A-M-J-U-L-I-A-N-B-A-I-L-E-Y. And my Twitter, which I'm not active on really, 
I'm trying to funnel people to I am Julian Bailey as well. Same handle on Twitter, but I haven't been active on Twitter. If you want to only go on Twitter, Twitter when you're angry about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, <laughs> Twitter kind of scares me a little bit, but, um, <laughs> but I have it. You know, if anyone wants to follow me on Twitter, they can do that there as well. And yeah, um, but yeah, yeah we so kind of do that too. We've got Twitter. We put, we put our episodes out there just like we do on all social media, but we really have it just to kind of keep track of everything else that's on there. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun to, it's fun to keep track of things on there. It's um, yeah. Kinda. And, um, and that's about it. Pretty straightforward. I did have a website, but the website thing kind of seemed to seem to become somewhat obsolete with Instagram and everything. But yes. having said that my website is, uh, it's kind of down right now, but it's julianbailey.com and I don't have anything up right now. So don't go there. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I had a line in a movie once that I did. Uh, and I play this guy who's got this, uh, he's like pr pretending to be this rich, uh, tech tycoon guy. And he's like this young dude. I did this movie with Jeffrey Tambor and Jesse Plemons called meeting Spencer. You should check it out if you have it. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, um, I had a line there when i'm talking about this website that i made for short people dating and um and uh it's, it's i'm making it up my character's just making it up on the fly <laughs> and i'm like and the guy's like what's the website called because i'm i'm trying to he, he's trying to get money for me which i don't have but he thinks i do to, to yeah. put a play up on broadway and i said uh, it's called shortpeople.com and he goes shortpeople.com and i'm like yeah shortpeople.com but don't go there you won't find anything which is which is the same Thing with julian bailey.com at the moment <laughs> don't go there you won't find anything um but maybe i'll put something cool up at some point i know we're gonna get off here and you're gonna be like scrambling to get it <laughs> yeah no don't go there yet uh but yeah instagram <laughs> would be the spot yeah that's awesome well thank you so much julian and definitely come back anytime i appreciate it thank you so much for having me yeah you're welcome okay hold on fun. really enjoyed that one julian Bailey, I think he is such a talented actor, and he gets to play he plays some really, um, I'll call them quirky roles, but they're just they're very layered, and I I really enjoyed that. I think uh, I think we're going to continue to see bigger and bigger things. I really think he's a good good actor. A um, couple of them that we didn't mention, he uh, he had a role on Alice in uh, Borderland on Netflix. He Obviously, he's doing a lot of work with uh, Netflix. He played uh, Agent Hayes on uh, Quantico, but he's been on a lot of the shows that uh, that that we watch: Cold Case, Charm, Jag, Judging Amy. Um, I think that's all of them. There may have been a few others on there too. So he's been at this for for a while. If you haven't checked out Three Pines, do yourself a favor, go check that out. It is really, really good. One, one of the uh, shows I enjoyed the most over the last several months. Just really good. Um, we also had uh, Sarah Booth from the uh, show. She plays the uh, deputy on the show. It's also a really good role. Um, so if you enjoyed this interview, look for that one as well. Sarah was uh, terrific, uh, too. If this is your first time joining us, you're finding us uh, for the first time, thank you. For, uh, for giving us a chance. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did and you'd like to support us, a couple of easy ways to do that. If you're watching, it's YouTube MeisterCon Pod. Just hit that subscribe button. Please subscribe. It really does help us out a ton. Really appreciate that. If you're listening, wherever you're listening to your podcast at, whatever app you're using, just subscribe there. That'll help us as well. Really appreciate that. We, uh, we put up episode number 518 today, and you can find all of those, audio and video, on our website, MeisterCon.com. It'll also let you know if we're doing anything in studio, if we're going on location, you know, if we're covering a convention, whatever we have going on to be on the website, MeisterCon.com. So check us out there. Thank you guys so, so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody. <laughs>